You know, I talked a, a, a last night a, a, a lot about the nation. It's hard for me to to go anywhere else, really. Um, my calling is to not one region or one city. My calling is to um, the nation as a whole, and that's always on my mind. Uh, that's what I think about when I do the posts. I try to do something that will help you grow in your walk with the Lord, but also try to connect it to, to the nation. My assignment for 30 years has been to work toward shifting the nation back into what it needs to be. And uh, I didn't know it would take that long. But it does take a while to turn a nation. And God's doing great things. He's, um, he's been working behind the scenes in a lot of ways to, to get us ready for the turning. Not just to turn us, but to, to steward a turning. To disciple a nation and to accomplish what we need. So, you know, God's been working, doing a lot of things. And He's going to finish what He started. Amen? Amen. So, you know, last night I talked about uh, the, the mocking spirit that I hear in the nation that the enemy tries to uh, discourage us with what he's doing. And uh, our response to that is, is to keep ourselves encouraged and keep ourselves focused and not allow what he's doing to distract us. He always tries to discourage us by um, pointing out his victories and his um, activities. And our job is to stay focused on what the Lord is saying, not on what the enemy is doing. We have to know what he's doing because we have to pray and we have to, uh, depending on our calling, do things to offset that. But at the same time, we have to take our marching orders from the Lord, from Holy Spirit. And I mentioned David's mighty men last night, and you know, how uh, D David's army, how they they, um, they started out as a, as a very um, ragtag group of soldiers. They weren't even soldiers. They were misfits, discouraged, bitter at life. And that was David's army when he was, when he was first called and instead of the palace he found himself in a cave. And he had to fight through that and he had to grow through that to get to the point where God could use him to do all that he wanted to do. But the, to, this morning I'm going to read to you how that army of misfits turned out. And I'm going to, we're going to let the enemy know that his mocking was in vain. Amen. So, you can read about David's mighty men in 1 Chronicles 11 and 12. You can read about them in 2 Samuel 23. And I'm just going to read a few verses to describe how these misfits that were bitter, discouraged, in debt, the down and outers of the day, gathered to him in a cave, and this is how they ended up. These are the names of some of the mighty men David had. Adino the Ezra, Esnite, because of eight, he was called Adino the Ezra because of 800 people slain by him at one time. He fought in one battle, he fought so hard and so in such a, a significant, skilled way that he killed 800 enemies in one battle. Eleazar, the son of Dodo the Ahohite. Any of you pregnant families looking for names? <clears throat> the son of Dodo the Ahohite. Maybe that, maybe not do, do that. That might not work. One of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered to battle <clears throat> and the 
other Israelites had withdrawn. Listen to this. This is one of my favorite stories of David's mighty men. He arose and struck the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword. And the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the people returned after him to get the slain. When the battle was over, they had to peel his fingers off of his sword. I said in one of my books, when he could hold on no longer with his physical strength, he just held on with his heart. Shama. Took his stand in a ground, a plot full of lentils, peas, and fought the Philistines off and brought about a great victory. Benaiah, who jumped in a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. These guys, some of them became sort of, I think, loony. They just were crazy warriors. Many historians say David's mighty men, by the time God developed them into the fighting army that they became, was probably the greatest fighting group of men the world has ever known. So when, when Satan comes to us and says, You can't do this. You can't turn this nation around. It's too far gone. I'm too entrenched in government and education. There's too much immorality. The church is too lukewarm. When he mocks us and he comes and he says, it's too late, our response is, must be, go to the word of the Lord and say, we are the army of God. He has prepared us for this time. We are well able to do this. We will overcome. We will defeat every foe. God will do everything he said he would do in this nation. He will accomplish everything. Every bit of it. So I'm just going to make some decrees over you right now. I want you to listen. And just receive what God says about you for a few minutes. We are the children of God. We are blessed with his nature and his life. We carry the very life and nature of Almighty God in us. We are His family. Jesus is our brother. Yahweh is our daddy. Holy Spirit is our guide, our helper, our comforter, our strength, our empower. Everywhere we go, He goes with us. We represent Him with full authority and full strength. We have all the rights and blessings of children in the family of God. We are heirs of Jesus, joint heirs with God. God, we have the right to everything that heaven possesses. All that Jesus bought and paid for belongs to us. We are God's kids. We will never be anything less than God's kids. We are the family of God. We carry his name, his nature, his life, his very DNA. We think with him, dream with him, speak for him, run with him, walk with him, touch for him, heal for him. We are the family of God, the children of God, and therefore we win. Always, all the time, we win. We are the mighty men and women of the kingdom. And what David developed physically, God has developed now in this nation spiritually. He has a company of warriors. He has a remnant company of warriors, a part of his ecclesia, that the powers of darkness will never be able to overcome, overthrow, because we will always conquer and win in Jesus. Jesus.